welcome to uh, admissions um, classes. Uh, my name is Ayaka and I am a consultant with LSAT Unplugged. Um, today, I, I did want to take some time to talk about letters of recommendation. Um, I think the people here um, are kind of looking to hopefully, I think most of us are looking to apply next cycle, so starting in the fall. Um, so for your consideration and maybe you've already had conversations with your the people that you are getting your letters from and um, but kind of what kind of conversations do you want to have with your uh with your recommenders um you know what you want to ask them to write about um so we can talk about that here i did want to it's going to be more of a spiel than um a presentation I don't think there's much to present on but um letters of rec they are something that you know are easy to kind of knock off your list of things to do um in your application but we want to make sure that we're doing it strategically so um some of the things that we want to consider for letters of rec who is writing your letters of rec um many schools will ask for an academic letter um if you've been out of college for quite a bit many times schools will take professional letters as well. Um, so people who are, who've been out of school, who've been working, you know, that may be a great way to kind of showcase if maybe um, you don't have the highest GPA, that may be a great way to showcase how you are in the workplace um, and how you've matured and grown uh, since graduating college. So um, really we wanna consider who and what you want the letter to say. Um, we get the question a lot, you know, I've been out of school for a very long time um, and I haven't kept in touch in, with my professors. Um, that's very common and I'm sure many professors get that, um, that note from students who graduated a couple years ago and they haven't kept in touch and they want a letter of rec. Um, make sure that you're having a conversation via email, via Zoom, via phone call in some sort of way with the professor that you want to ask if you want to go that down that route, um, if they can write a strong letter for you. Um, it is, I think it is a hard conversation to have, but um, it is a more, um, what do I say? How do I say this? Um, like a better conversation to have earlier than later, right? So if you're looking for, I'm sure everyone's looking for a strong letter of recommendation and to kind of touch base with your professor if you're reaching out to them um, for the first time in a long while, um, to ask after you've had a conversation or two to say, hey, do you think you can write a strong letter of recommendation for me? Most professors know what a strong recommendation letter looks like and what a sort of average letter of rec looks like. Um, so, you know, you can gauge it that way. Um, and if the answer to that is absolutely yes, I think that's a great, you know, that would be a great thing to have in your application. If the professor is kind of iffy and they're like, mm, you know, I would have to kind of look back at the work that you've done, or we would need to have another conversation. Um, you know, that that's a good answer as well. You don't want to end up with a letter of work that's lackluster and kind of like, oh, they just put their name down on a template. So that's one. Um, for professional letters of rec, I think um, what would be beneficial is either someone you've worked under or someone you've worked with closely. So maybe it is a colleague um, that, you know, might be in a different position than you are, but you had to work closely with, um, or someone, maybe your direct boss, maybe your boss's boss, maybe. Um, so kind of consider where in that organization you are getting that letter from. Um, and my ask usually to whenever somebody um, in a professional setting is writing a letter of rec, I think it is good to have them introduce themselves in that first paragraph. So maybe help them get that ball rolling. Um, usually I say, hey, can you make sure that they know? And sometimes people move positions as they get promoted or they get go to other companies or they retire. 
um, that they mark the time that they worked with you. So, you know, say I worked with Ayaka Chin from 2017 to 2020, let's say, right? And kind of mark that time and then in what relation they were to you. So I, you know, I was the head of sales for X, Y, and Z. Ayaka w- worked in this department, right? And so we can kind of understand where that relationship came in um, before you go into that professional letter. So I think it's a good ask to make sure that your professional letter um, marks that relationship. Um, and then, uh, so at that point, any questions? It's probably, it's probably very straightforward. All right. Um, and then second part is a little bit more of the heavy lifting that you might want to have a, um, you might want to think about your application as a whole before you are asking for letters of rec. Letters of rec are some of the first couple of things that you really need to um, start on, meaning you need to have that conversation early on and give a couple months of lead time for your professor or your boss or your coworker to write that letter for you. Um, um, sorry. And then kind of, so you have to have a little bit of runway to, um, let them write the letter and turn the letter in, into, um, the LSAC website. The turn in process is not, uh, difficult. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You have to put in a little bit of information about your letter of rec writer and the letter of rec person has to kind of respond to this email that is triggered by LSAC once you input all that information in. Um, however, people are busy. <laughs> um, professors tend to write letters of rec during the summer or Thanksgiving break or winter break. During the semester, professors are busy. So it's really hard to um, kind of ask them in the middle of the semester and say, hey, I need a letter in four weeks, right? So we really wanna give them that leeway. If you're looking to apply, you know, right as applications open in the fall, it is best if you ask in the spring and have them turn it in during the summer so you have it ready in your, um, in your LSAC account. Now going to the more important piece about what to have um, written about yourself in the letters, I think you have to take a look at your what you intend to write, or if you've already written your personal statement, what you've written there, any optional essays you've written, and see if there's any gaps, right? Um, you may be writing an addendum, let's say for, for your GPA, which important, um, but also if you have a professor who can attest to how you are in the classroom, for example, you are always prepared, you know the material, and you are always offering maybe another perspective in the discussion. You know, those are important things, and those are things that can, that may not show in your GPA, right? And so that may be something that you can ask your professor and say, hey, I don't have the highest GPA going into law school. However, I think I excelled in your class. Can you write to how I was, how I participated in discussions in class and, and kind of emphasize on my ability to, you know, feel different points of views and X, Y, and Z. So, you know, I think it's, you can get pretty prescriptive and ask people to write certain things. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they will write it, but it is kind of a suggestion of like, hey, I would love it if you can emphasize, um, you know, how well I did on this project, for example, or how how um, how awesome my honors thesis was, or anything of that nature. So I think you can put that ask out there. Um, it's still up to the writer to uh, include that in the letter, but I think it is generous to kind of go in. And also you're advocating for yourself and saying, hey, these are the things that I really want to amp up in my application um, to make it holistic and make it a little bit more well-rounded. Um, professional letters as well, you can also write about, you can you can ask your letters, I'm sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. 
excuse me. Um, so you can ask your um, letter of rec writer um, to talk about, you know, your work ethic, how detail oriented you are. Maybe you're um, super quick on your feet. Uh, maybe you're a great public speaker. You know, all of those things, good qualities to have. Um, I think it's better than just saying this person will be a great candidate for law school. Like that's a little lackluster. So, you know, asking people to focus on certain qualities about yourself in the workforce would be a little bit more um, punchy and um, I think would result in a better uh, letter of rec. So um, I think those are the big things that we really want to think about when we're asking for letters of rec. Um, really think about timing, how much time, and no matter how much time you give, many per, um, people will wait until that last two weeks. So make sure you are sending reminders um, to your writers and saying, hey, like this is when I want to turn in my application. I would love to get your letter in on XYZ date. Um, so kind of give them that grace and make sure you're sending them reminders. Um, and I get a lot of questions about writing, having um, letters of rec written for each school. So they're changing the name of the school for each letter. Um, I think the same with um, people who are writing personal statements that are tailored or like, you know, you're changing the name of the school for each school that you're for personal statements. Um, it can allow for mistakes. And as much as we think that mistakes don't happen, um, it happens every year where people send the wrong letter of rec, people send the wrong personal statement, happens every year. So, um, you know, maybe for your top, top choice schools, um, you could have your um, letter writers to create like specific school specific uh, letters. Um, but that does require your writer to also kind of tailor the language a bit to the school as well. Um, so know what you're asking for. Um, also make sure if that's happening, also um, be sure to get a general letter as well. So you, you know, it's not a letter that you can only use for one school. Like maybe there is one that you can only use for one school, but you know, small tweaks, it could be also used for other schools. Um, so make sure you do that legwork and, you know, be upfront with what you're asking for. Um, and, you know, like I said, second big thing is really know where the gaps are in your application and have um, your letters of rec writers kind of fill in those gaps the best they can. And it's better if you do those asks ahead of time as well. Um, I know we have a couple questions from Jeff. I know we got that as a FAQ, um, but I do want to ask this room any questions. It doesn't have to be about letters of rec, anything about admissions, any questions out there? We're good. All right. Um, so I know we got a couple FAQ questions. Uh, first one, how important is the addendum when applying to law school? That really depends on your application. So for example, if you have a super high GPA, kind of not the greatest uh, LSAT score, and there is, you know, you had connection issues, you had trouble with um, the proctoring, and that would be a good addendum to write to say, hey, there was a proctoring issue, I had a bad connection, um, I lost time on the test, therefore I couldn't, I didn't score where I thought I, where I wanted to score. Um, that's a good addendum. Or if, you know, you fell ill during your four years um, undergrad, and so, you know, you can clearly see that there's a GPA dip, um, that would probably be a good addendum to write. There's also very, um, schools will ask you to write specific addendas and that may be different per school. Um, some schools will ask if you've been um, released, fired, 
uh, re restructured out from a job. To tell us about what was going on there. Um, I call that an agenda because it's part of this list of things that they're asking for. Um, so that would probably fall under agendas. Um, I know another school was asking for um, if, you know, like if you had more than a 10 point jump in your LSAT score over the course of multiple tests, kind of explain what was going on there. Um, there are schools that don't require addendums and they're like, we'll just look at everything. Um, so really think about if it's an open uh, invitation to write an addendum, uh, don't go crazy and write 10 pages of an addendum. Um, we've seen it before. It just sounds like a lot. Um, and it, if it's 10 pages, I think it's, a, it's too much that you're explaining. So, um, and be very upfront. Um, the importance of an addendum, if, if you're trying to write an addendum for a single bad grade, I don't think that's worth your time. Um, but it can give more context to what is going on in your application. So if you think you haven't explained yourself enough with your application, I think it is good to write an addendum. And then the second one, what should I expect in law school? Well, um, I think uh, you should expect to learn about the law. And I hope that is um, pretty uh, straightforward. But if we're talking about, you know, what is in your first year, second year, third year, um, many admissions officers will be talking about that first year and it is your core courses. Um, there are some schools that have interesting core courses. So I know the Antonin Scalia School, they have um, an econ course that they, they require all of their students to take like econ in the law or something like that. And it's, um, it's a very particular course and it creates like a foundation of knowledge. So um, that first year really is about that foundation. It's about, um, you know, doing the core courses that the school requires. And then starting in the second year, you can kind of go into um, your elective courses. And, it, and the schools are different. So the elective courses that they provide will be different. Um, and that can vary on location, the type of school that you're going to. Um, and, and, you know, that can also depend on what kind of clinics they provide, um, centers that they have that are that they're associated with. So that can really color your law school experience. So really, um, I know a lot of people are looking into, you know, the top 14, the top schools to go to, um, but really look into what courses you're interested in. Um, I know many people, you know, write about which type of law they want to go into in their personal statement. And that's great. But um, when you do that, make sure you look into the coursework. And if you're really serious about what you wanna pursue, look into the coursework, look into the course catalog, the professors who are in that field, see what they're publishing and kind of be aware of where that school excels. Um, you know, if you're like the law school in Hawaii, they're very big on um, the environmental law. And, um, it doesn't mean you have to pursue that career, but um, you want to know what courses are being offered. And if you're looking to do like IP law, and you know, and of course, uh, the University of Hawaii is going to have that, but it it might not be as robust as other schools that um, have a real strength in that area. So and that's kind of what what you want to look at. Um, when you look at you know what to expect in law school and uh what think about what you want out of the law school experience all right um any i know those two were the faq questions that we got in email any other questions out there Not quite great today all righty well we will uh, call it a night. Thank you all for joining. Um, I will not be here next week. 
So I will be traveling, um, but hopefully we will restart after that. So thank you so much. And I uh, hope everyone has a good night. Thank hey, you. Rock, I just had a quick question actually. Sure. Um, so I am almost actually done with my essay. I was a little busy with uh, starting no a new job. So I didn't really get to uh, finalize in it. Um, so I'll have that, I guess, in two weeks. Um, but for the letter of recommendations, um, yeah. I just was thinking really quick off the top of my head. I have at least one. I have another one from, I have two jobs. Uh, I'll try to reach out to some professors, but I've just been, I mean, I haven't been, it's only been a year since I graduated, but <laughs> I guess I can ask one guy who, you know, one professor who I knew really well and he was really nice. I just don't know if it'll be like as personable like you were mentioning kind of in this class. That's all I wanted to ask. I think you should start the conversation and see if he, you know, remembers you being in class and all of that. Um, I think also it would be great if you could have like references of like the work that you've done in those in the course with that professor um and i say it's always better to go see the professor i don't know if you're in a situation where you can go see them um but you know zoom call phone call email that's all available to you so i would reach out first and you know kind of talk through how you want the letter to be, you know, and kind of update on your life saying, hey, like I'm looking to apply to law school um, and I wanna pursue X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, I really enjoyed your class. This is the, the, the classwork that I did and this was impactful. Would you be able to write a letter of rec for me? And then, you know, start that conversation. And then I think you can get a gauge of like whether this person can write a strong one for you. Um, and I think it's worth your while to do that kind of research <laughs> for your professor um, at, of your professor and see if they can write what write a strong one for you um, and really ask you. I mean, you can go ahead and ask them, you know, like after this information, do you feel like you can write a strong letter of rec for me? Um, they're used to kind of these out of the blue requests, I would think. So um I don't think, you know, just go in with confidence. If they say no, um, I think it's a bullet dodged rather than a missed opportunity. So, um, but maybe have a couple, do you have a couple professors lined up? Um, yeah, I have uh, one, I have, yeah, I guess I have three. One of them is, was the director of our like um, criminal justice program. Yeah. Um, and the coordinator for uh, the co-op program and also criminal justice coordinator just in regards to like the graduate program. So I'll reach out to her. She was also very nice. I'll yeah. reach out to our director of the criminal justice program. You know, why yeah. not go with it? And I'll just uh, let you know in two weeks um, <laughs> what each one had to say, I guess. Yeah, I, I think that would be great. And, um, you know, it's have the conversation earlier <laughs> and then later is probably where we're at right there. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.